I would like to rage paint. Yes, today we have a rather stereotypical half giant barbarian. Big dude, furs, giant weapons screaming to the sky. And we're going to go over painting a bit of an unusual skin tone. Well, a couple different ways to do weapons, tattoos, and a few other bits. So we're going to paint him with a gray stone-like skin color. And we don't necessarily want to go with just straight gray colors like German gray, neutral gray, and light gray. Uh, the reason for that is because when painting an obvious human figure, it's a really good idea to try to get some of those standard human flesh tones mixed in. It makes it look a bit more realistic for lack of a better word, but if we just painted him straight gray, may look a little eye because everyone knows what a typical human looks like. So that's the reason why we're starting off with brown violet and we're mixing in some heavy brown to our stone wall gray. So our gray has a brown undertone to it and it's a little bit more connected to an actual living human being. As always, we are using the layering method to paint him because the skin, it's such a, a broad, large area of the figure and we're going over a relatively smooth surface. Our paint is very thin here, roughly about one to four paint to water ratio. And we slowly build up those colors. So each one of the layers you're seeing here is actually repeated multiple times until we stop seeing uh, a noticeable difference when we add another layer of that same color. As we get up to the final highlights, the paint can be a little bit thicker uh, when painting sharp details. Not a whole lot of sharp details on the skin here, um, just kind of like the eyebrow ridge and the cheeks and the nose and the fingers. We eventually work our way up to straight stone wall gray and a little unusual color mix this time. Normally we add lighter colors to highlight the base coat. Uh, in this case, we had stone wall gray in the mix the entire time and we slowly removed colors until we were using just straight stone wall gray. Also by now, hopefully you can see the benefit of using a brown undertone for our gray and mixing in the brown at certain steps. Uh, if we didn't, he would probably look like a statue right now, but because we have that brown in with that gray, he looks human and hopefully he looks living, like a living, breathing human and not just a, a cold, dead rock. On to his fur mantle and leggings now. And this is a really good example of contrast and the whole reason why we highlight uh, areas on a miniature to increase their contrast and make them easier to see. Two ways we could have painted this. First, the more complicated way would have been to use a texturing method, much like we did on uh, for example, painting the horse a couple videos ago. So a thicker paint done in streaks would have given a nice fur texture, but we're going with this more simple method because again, I wanted to show you the contrast that we add by adding additional highlights to a miniature. So let's just talk about the fur mantle because I think it's easier to witness here with that. We started off with an undercoat of camo black brown and we're proceeding to add, I think we add about five or six uh, highlight layers to that. And as we work on each additional layer, we work towards the tip of each one of those little fur nodules on the mantle. So the first highlight covers virtually everything, leaving just the camo black brown in the deep recesses. And then the second highlight leaves that color a little bit. And we just work our way down towards the tip. And what initially started out as just kind of a camo black-brown lump 
really starts to take shape as we add additional highlights to it and the contrast starts uh, really to take over and define the shape of the mantle and we're working those highlights towards those tips and right underneath the tip is is that deep recess with the camel black brown so it really makes that area pop now uh, so instead of just a brown lump we really start to put definition in and that's all because of the contrast our eye is viewing this very light colored area next to a very dark color area and it's, it's like an edge it's just like a an edge of a letter or a number we can see it now much more clearly because we have dark and we have light and that tells us that is the end of a point here so contrast really defines you know, what a miniature is or what an object on a miniature is usually the more contrast the better how much you want to add is totally up to you We're going to do a little bit of cleanup work using a mix of black ink and sepia ink. Just put in the recesses here and there to clean up any mistakes. But I'd like for you to imagine what you think this would look like if we just took a light brown like flat earth or bone white and just put that down as a base coat and covered it with a, a very dark wash. Do you really think we would get the same contrast that we did by applying all these layers. On to the leather, and for that we're gonna use the stippling method. We have the paint thinned about one to one ratio, and we are applying it with a kind of a stabbing motion with the tip of our brush. It's a good idea to paint leathers with the stippling method because leathers scratch and scuff very easily and it also makes uh, the piece just more interesting overall because we could have painted this just smooth and it would look like, you know, I don't know, a piece of canvas or a piece of cloth wrapped around his waist, but by stippling on the leathers, it makes that area look much more interesting. And also it's relatively easy to paint uh, much easier to learn than, say, layering, for example. As I said, leather gets damaged very easily, so I always like to up the contrast at the final step a little bit. And just a few spots here or there to really highlight any little scuffs or scratches in it. And it's really good doing it on boots as well. The tip of leather boots I always like to over highlight. It just makes them look a little bit more realistic. All right, on to the weapons, and decided to do two different ways uh, of painting weapons here. So the first one we're gonna do, we're gonna paint a really clean, very expensive looking sword. And we started off with Vallejo Model Air Gunmetal, and to that we're using a couple spot washes of Dark Prussian Blue, just to give a really clean metal look to it. After applying the blue in the recesses, we're going to take some black and put that in the deeper recesses. And basically, I'm trying to darken the blue here, not necessarily add black, but uh, just get a darker blue shade. And just go ahead and put this wherever you think it's going to be necessary. And it's okay to overdo this step. 
you know, you can get the wash where it's not supposed to be. Don't worry about getting it super clean because you can always go back and reapply the base coat to clean up areas where you were a little bit messy. Then the next step is to apply our highlight. We are just using Vallejo Model Air Steel for that. And a little tricky doing all the highlighting and shading on this Flamberg here. It does make it look very interesting with all the unusual curves in the sword, but uh, yeah, a little tricky to highlight, I do admit that. But in the end, we have a very clean, exotic looking weapon. Now for the axe, we're going to paint that as more of a, a damaged weapon, something you just picked up off the ground from an orc he killed or something. And started off with an undercoat of Leho Model Air gunmetal mixed with charred brown to dull the metal and give it a bit of a brown tone. And now we're going back with just straight gunmetal and applying just a few highlights here and there and trying to highlight the edge using a texture. So the paint's a little bit thicker, just drawing lines, kind of like it has a, a serrated edge on the axe. To add a little bit more rust and dirt, charred brown mixed with burnt cadmium red, and just applying it as a wash in the recesses and kind of just smoothing it out with our finger. This is very basic. We don't have to paint a very clean pattern here. We kind of want it spotty. So just a wash and a little bit of dab with your finger is works perfectly in this case. And then once again, we finish off with black and the recesses. And this time we're gonna put a little bit along the edges of the blade, just like we did with the gun metal to give the idea that it's not you know, super polished. It's not a very fine edge. It's a bit more rough and serrated. So we have two different weapons here, one looking very clean and one looking very dirty and well used. Finally, tattoos. Very simple to do, uh, but the trick is what colors you pick. Normally, what I would recommend using is Vallejo Model Color Dark Prussian Blue, but I know if I didn't use red here, people would have a fit. But the trick is you want to add some of your initial flesh color in with your uh, tattoo color. And that really helps to soften the look and not make it look like it's paint on the skin, but more that it's a part of the skin. Uh, in this case, when, since we're using red, we do have a bit of a problem since uh, red doesn't play well with other colors. And also we're doing this over a very gray skin tone. So just a very small amount of the stonewall gray was added as a highlight. Normally, if we were doing a regular tattoo, I would be mixing in dark Prussian blue with whatever the base skin tone was, and then more skin tone as a singular highlight, because you, you don't want to stand out too much. You want it to be a bit more subtle than what we're doing here. And there we go. There is our big barbarian. So. We got an unusual skin tone, uh, two different ways to do weapons, a little bit of leather work, and sort of how to do tattoos. This miniature was a really good example of different methods of painting. While I always recommend layering, and we did do that on the skin, and we had the paint very thin, and we took our time and slowly built up layers, that was really the only area that we went real extreme with the layering. All the other areas are much smaller. We use thicker paint or we use different technique like stippling to get the effect that we wanted. Even on the weapons, all we did was a base coat, two washes, and a highlight. So while I recommend you practice layering, you don't necessarily have to do that on every single area of the miniature. Try different techniques and use the technique that works best for you. Thanks for watching.